Fletch X here. Hopefully everyone's having a great day. Uh, we're going to be doing a quick video on broadheads today and which ones I am running this fall. And so for that, we've got four broadheads that we're going to go over, my thoughts and opinions on them. And, you know, some of them I've used in the past, absolutely loved. And then one a couple of them I haven't really used. I don't think I've shot a deer with a couple of them, but they intrigue me. And the last one that we're gonna be, the second to last one we're gonna be going over, it's more of all the hype that's kind of around it. So we're gonna just throw some grizzly in real quick and then we'll get started. So, one of the things that I luckily get to do this year is I get to go on several hunts, uh, so I get to test out several different broadheads, and so that being said, one of the ones I'm excited to try out again is the Levi Morgan Series Schwacker. This is a two and a half inch cut broadhead and it has tapered it has tapered blades so in my mind the reason why they did that excuse me the reason why I think they did that is because it makes more sense because if you have something that's flat you're basically pushing against something. It's like you're forcing it through versus if it's angled down like it is, then it's, you know, able to have a cleaner pass through on your animals. And it's a lot less kinetic force that you're losing as it's going through the animal. And then the other thing I like, obviously, is bands are super easy to get on and off of it. it has a nice chisel tip. I've harvested one or two deer with this particular head and one was a really large doe and I was shooting down at her out of a tree stand and luckily I was shooting a, this large cutting diameter head because I hit her in the spine but since it's a two and a half inch cut I believe it caught the uh, artery that runs beneath the spine and so she you know expired very quickly and I put a second one I put a second arrow in her just to be sure because as bow hunters especially we want quick clean ethical kills and we don't want any unnecessary suffering and then I've shot this head several times and it flies like a dart it's very aerodynamic and penetrates super well. I haven't had, I've only shot two deer with them and both times I haven't had any malfunctions or anything. And so I'm not, this is probably one of the most impressive mechanicals I have shot so far. And then the next one is, this is, the uh, dead meat. I'm not going to be for sh shooting this particular head, but I will be shooting essentially its big brother, the mega meat, this fall. I technically did shoot a deer with this particular head, but it was a follow up shot. And so basically the blades are clipped into place here. And then they drop down like so. And all my heads are 125 grains. That's just what I've shot. And I like a lot more FOC up front since I've got short Oompa Loompa arms. I only have a 28 inch draw. So my arrows aren't exactly the longest, but I like to keep a heavier head. So I have plenty 
of weight out front to make sure I have enough, enough kinetic energy to get pass throughs. But this head, uh, had a, I only shot it with a follow-up shot, but it performed well. I get flew perfectly. It penetrated very well. It went straight through the deer and stuck in the dirt on the other side because the deer was lying down when I finished it off. But it flies really well. The blades are very sharp. Um, the way it is designed, the blades... I've never had an issue of the blades accidentally coming unlocked. And if anyone has paid attention to the comments I've made about myself on the channel so far, I am not easy on my gear. So, I, like if I'm spotting and stalking, I'm like that last hundred yards or so. I have my arrow knocked, I'm shoving my bow ahead of me, like I'm lifting it up, and so the blades are hitting the grass and everything, I never had blades catch on there, catch onto the grass and accidentally come unclipped, like, I never had any issues with it, <laughs> but it seems to be very well designed, hasn't had any failures so far, like, it's one of the heads that I'm actually pretty impressed with. And then the next head. Don't think I should have put a dip in for this video. So apologize about the uh, spitting noises. The third head that we're going to go over is the G5 Striker V2s. This is a this is my all-time favorite fixed head. This. This head has impressed me on so many occasions, and I've shot six or seven deer with this particular broadhead. Not this one in particular, but its style, the Striker V2s, and it flies perfectly. I've shot them out to 100 yards, and they're right there with my field points, and they're, I don't really notice any wind drift or, you know, planing. I don't notice that, you know, some broadheads, they just like to go in a certain way. They just hit, they just shoot right or something like that. Like this, this flies and hits right where my field points are. So as long as my bow is tuned, I know these are going to perform incredibly well. And they penetrate super well. Like I shot a doe two years ago or three years ago I can't remember I think it was three years ago I shot a doe right through the top of the shoulder you know there's still a bunch of you know muscle there and everything but it went straight through the shoulder right through the muscle through the bone hit a rib and then still buried in the dirt up to about there on the other side so this head performs, and it performs very well. And then the other thing that's super nice is they are super, super sharp. Like, they send a Band-Aid in the packaging for a reason. I might replace the blades on this one because I've used the... Well, actually, I, I am going to replace the blades. But I've used it for practice on targets and everything. It's just been kind of my practice broadhead. But I know this broadhead performs and it's super sharp. Like, I put rubber, not rubber bands, but band-aids on my fingers when I'm going to screw them on. So I can protect my fingers so I accidentally don't get cut to the bone. But this head performs super well. I have nothing bad to say about it. And... Saving my least favorite for last. And I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. Because this is a very popular head in the hunting industry. But. This is the, I believe it's the Rage Hypodermic. I can just not bring myself to like this head. I've had it in my quiver for I'm 
not this exact rod up. I've had one, at least one rage in my quiver for like the last three seasons. And I've experienced nothing but frustration with this. And one of the things I kept experiencing is when I put my broadhead back in my quiver because when you're in a rush and you're at bow hunting like stock got blown but you know there's another group of deer over here and you have to haul butt over there I just shove my arrow in there and lock it into place well I had numerous occasions where one of the blades would just do that just pop out of place and so if you don't notice that your blade's not locked in like you quickly knock an arrow and you're focused completely on what you're doing Guess what that blade's gonna do? As your arrow's flying through the air, this is gonna start doing some weird stuff. And I know that there's people out there that absolutely love these heads. I know that the Lakoskis, they shoot these religiously and they've uh, used it on numerous animals. But not just white tails, but other North American big game. And I, I don't know. It's just, there's too much that can go wrong. If I'm spotting and stalking, because I live out west, like if I'm out of antelope hunting or mule deer hunting, I usually, like, that last hundred yards and you're belly crawling, you have your arrow knocked in, you're, like, shoving your bow ahead of you. This is, catches on some sheet grass or something, pops your blade loose, and you don't notice. You're either going to wound that animal or miss by a mile, and we don't want that. So, I just can't bring myself to liking this head. I mean, the few times I've shot it in practice, because I'll just take a head and I'll shoot it out there into my block, and... It flies fairly well. It hits right where I need it to, but I've just had too many functions of putting it back in my quiver, it getting caught on something while I'm spotting and stalking and a blade gets knocked loose or this or that. I mean, the overall quality is there. Like, it's good, high quality, high grade steel. They're fairly sharp. They're not like amazingly sharp. I need to do some sharpness tests on some of these heads just to kind of show you guys. But this head, I just, I can't get around to liking it. I might test it when I go down south this year because, like I say, in a lot of the Midwest, the southern, and eastern states, you can roll off a bunch of doe tags. And when I'm out there doing those kind of hunts, I like to try and donate some meat or this or that. But, I don't know. I just, I can't bring myself to liking the Rage. It's just not my thing. But, I'll test it out this year. I'll, I'll give it a fair assessment. And, especially after this fall, like, I know I've shot multiple deer with the Schwacker. I'm going to be using the Mega Meats. I'm going to shoot a couple of deer with that, hopefully. And, I've shot a bunch of deer with the Striker V2s from G5. And, they've all performed very well. And, for me... I expect excellence out of my gear because I expect excellence out of myself. So if something isn't meeting the criteria, it's not in my toolbox. So I'm going to give this broadhead one more chance and we'll see how it goes. Um, but a couple of the other heads that I'm going to hopefully try out this fall are the Beast Broadheads by Bomar Archery. Uh, try those out and for another fixed head I'm thinking about trying out the uh, Grim Reaper fixed heads I think it's the Hades I think that's what they're called I'm going to try out those and see how I like them and I think you can get those up to 150 grains but I only need 125 grains and so like those are the other two heads I'm going to test out this fall, hopefully. So um, basically the goal is to try and shoot at least one deer with each head. And, you know, I have several hunts this fall, so I'll have plenty of opportunity to try out 
with all the heads that I want to and if not try to out one or more of the heads at least twice. So I'm not giving them all a fair assessment, but that's kind of the arrows and the broadheads that are going to be in my quiver this year. But another video I'll be doing is the arrow I am running this year is the Easton Axis 5mm with the match grade and their 300 spine. So I'm going to be running those this fall. I'm going to test them out. I shot Easton Bloodlines for the longest time. Those are the ones that are in my quiver. I think I've been shooting the Easton Bloodlines for like the last five, six years, something like that. And so since they discontinued the Bloodlines, I had to find a different arrow to shoot. And I keep seeing a decent amount of people that are shooting the Easton Axis 5mm. And I think Easton Axis now makes a 4mm, but I could be wrong. So I'm going to fletch some of these up. I'm going to do some 2.75 tack veins on there. They're the drivers. And we're going to see how they fly. And I already rolled through all my arrows. I got the eight arrows that I wanted them. I roll through them and get the perfect six. And then the other six are going to be my practice arrows. So we'll go from there. But that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it's been informative. Help. Hopefully it helps you guys out in making your decisions for broadheads this fall. And hopefully it just kind of gives you a different point of view on stuff. Because that's kind of why... I'm doing reviews on products because I want to give you guys my opinion, but I also want you to uh, yeah, make your own thoughts and opinions on products. And I just want you to be encouraged to go out there and try different stuff because there's the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But at the same time, you know, sometimes trying out something new isn't bad. So I tried out a bunch of different heads like... I'm probably never going to find a head that I like more than those Striker V2s, but I could be wrong. There could be another fixed head that comes out in the future that I just absolutely love. But all I know is with those Striker V2s, I haven't had a deer go over 50 yards. So I can't complain with that. No track job really needed. So, but again, those are all the heads I'm running. If you guys have any comments below, leave them below. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave your comments. Feel free to DM me on Instagram and uh, also on Facebook. That's where Fly Chatics all is, is here on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. So hopefully this helped you guys out, and hopefully you all have a great rest of your weekend. Bye.